question that everyone's asked me to ask you is uh, what's going on with the hair? Who was the inspiration? Was it Gaza or Eminem? <laughs> now, first of all, obviously, I've had like the same haircut for what seems ages now. Um, so I thought I'd just try something new. And then um, I woke up this morning with a lot of comparisons to Gaza and Eminem. So, so yeah, it was my own thing and people turned it into something else. <laughs> What's the reaction been like from your friends and the other players in the squad? Yeah, you know, they've said that they've liked it. So, yeah, it's a positive, positive thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's all been positive, which I'm surprised about. <laughs> Are you aware of the comparisons with Gaza? I suppose you're only 21, so maybe you're too young to remember what a great player he was. Yeah, I remember watching um, highlights on the TV of Gaza. Um, unbelievable player. Um, you know, the full nation know what he means for, for the for the country and what he did. So, so yeah, it wouldn't be too bad if I tried to, um, you know, bring a bit of gas on the pitch. <laughs> it's obviously been 10 days now since the Champions League final. Has that been enough time for you to process what went wrong and to get it out of your system? Um, I, feel, I feel like the best way is to forget about what happened is playing football. So when I'm back on the training pitch with the guys here, um, I straight away forgot about it and yeah, I'm just focusing on England now and trying to do well here. Obviously, there's so much competition for places in this squad, especially in those forward positions. Is that similar to the situation you have at Manchester City or is it even harder to get in the starting eleven here? Um, yeah, it's pretty similar, to be honest. Um, no, I feel sorry for Gareth trying to pick an 11. Um, whoever he leaves out, it's going to be top quality players that are going to be on the bench. So whatever he does, I think, you know, the lads are going to be behind him and just believe in him. You're obviously very close to Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. What's your relationship like with Gareth Southgate? And do you see any similarities between the two managers and the way they work? I, th I think they're really different. Um, obviously, they have their own ways and ways of playing. Um, Gareth's great. You know, he talks to everyone and lets you know how he's feel, feeling about you and where you can improve. So, so yeah, I've had a couple of conversations with him and, yeah, it's great to talk to and he's always putting um, his arm around the players, which is important. We've got one of the youngest squads in this tournament. I, I just wonder if that might be a good thing in terms of the fact that we don't actually, people like you, we don't actually carry a lot of the baggage of those past traumas. Well, yeah, first of all, I just want to say um, the quality is very high. Um, yeah, we have got a lot of young players, but um, they can play at the highest level and we're seeing that this year. So, um, yeah, of course, we've still got the experience, you know, like Harry Kane and Jordan Henderson around around the team as well, which is important. So, um, yeah, I think we have a great balance in squad and, yeah, I think that we can we look really strong this, this tournament and why not? We could we could win it. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, next goes to Nat Perks, BBC Sport. How, um, how permanent is this hair? Are we going to see this against Scotland? Because you know what the comparisons are going to be. You've already mentioned his name. Yeah, I've dyed it now, so it's got to stay around for a while. So <laughs> it's not going. It's not going to change anytime soon. So you're OK with being called now the Stockport Gaza? Yeah, I don't mind that. You know, obviously, he's a, he's a great player, so I wouldn't mind that at all. Listen, you're, you're obviously being talked about in very high terms by England fans. So excited to see what you can do on this stage. Do you feel any pressure at all? Um, I wouldn't, no, not pressure. I'd feel, I feel excited. Um, you know, it's my first time at a major tournament with England. So I'm just excited to see what happens and what, what, what the future holds. England don't have a great um, history when it comes to the Euros. Um, how is this time going to be different? What's the mood like around all of you as to how far you can go? Yeah, you know, we've looked at previous times together as, as a team and, you know, we're all just feeling that confident. Um, you know, obviously me, Mason and Reese and Raz has, has made the Champions League final. So, um, you know, we've all been playing at a great, great standard this year. So I believe as a group and all together that um, we can really push on to win it. Thanks, Nick. Uh, we tend to put you guys, super talented young players, in the highest shelves of world football too early sometimes. Are you OK with that? And is that a sort of pressure to you? Yeah, I believe that's true. You know, um, you know, when someone's doing well, the media jump all over it. But, you know, we have a lot of um, young players in the team and 
they're all very level headed. So um yeah, it's not gonna get to me or any of the young players. Um so yeah, we're just gonna keep focused and just try and try and bring it on. Thanks, Marcello. Uh, Carrie Brown from Bean Sports. Well, um, after getting over the disappointment, or how quickly can you get over the disappointment of a Champions League final and then go in as teammates with the players you were defeated against? Yeah, obviously it hurts losing such an important game. But like I said, you know, I'm here training now with the team and you have to forget about it and be teammates. And yeah, we're all together and we're all working really hard to try and do the best we can. The positive among some of the disappointment that Manchester United players are feeling as well is that we've got a crop of players that have all got to major finals this year, that have won titles, as you continue to do with Manchester City and played such a big role in, and with Chelsea as well. Across the board, you've got players used to those crunch moments, to lifting silverware. That now is a big positive. Yeah, I think that, that can definitely help us. Um, like you just said there, we've had a lot of players playing in important games. So we'll know what it feels like if we get to the later stages and yeah, it can only help us. And I want to look to the game against Croatia. Where were you watching that match and, and what did you think of it? Which game, sorry? Um, England against Croatia in the semi-final. Oh yeah, I was at home with my parents um, watching the game. Um, I think it was Trippier who scored the free kick, um, got, got everyone out of the seat. Um, but you know, um, the lads did everyone proud that day. Um, and yeah, it was just a shame that we couldn't um, push on to the later stages. Some suggestions that Luka Modric's powers are waning. Is he a player that you look to as well through the highlights of the years? And, and do you consider he's waning at all as time? Yeah, you know, he's a fantastic player. Um, it's the one that we have to keep a close eye on. Um, yeah, he's, he's won a lot of trophies in his career and done a lot of things. So, so yeah, he's a great player and we're going to try and deal with him best as possible. This really was a breakthrough season for you. Only Kevin De Bruyne contributed some more goals for Manchester City, which is a remarkable statistic to have in really your first big se season in the Premier League. Who was key to shaping that and who from the Manchester City group of players have really helped you perform to you know the top senior levels? Yeah, you know, I've had a great season this year with my club. Um, but, you know, I'm here now training with England and that's the full focus is... Um, to try and do the best I can here. So that's all I'm focused on is, is, is being with the lads and, and, and working with him. I know for Raheem, your teammate, his um, Wembley is a very special place for him. Lots of selection about who could start from and he's saying you two have to start. But could you imagine that back then at the start of the season, everyone said, you know, you, you're nailed on to start. They'd expect you to start. They hope you to, hope for you to start in a major final. Yeah, you know, there's, there's no guaranteed starter in this team. Um, I think Gareth has got to look at training and see who's um, training the best and where everyone's at with fitness and things. So, so yeah, anyone could start and um, be amazing. And that's the strength we have in the squad. And for Raheem, do you think he can perform at the top of his levels, returning to Wembley again? You know, his, his goals speak for himself. Um, every year he's always there, um, always scoring so many goals and creating chances. Um, so, yeah, Raheem could be a really important player for us. You're a strong collective, you're an influential young man. Are the rest of the team going blonde? Sorry, say that again? Will the rest of the team go blonde too? <laughs> um, no, not too many um, as as brave as me. So, so, yeah, I think they like their hairstyles and keep with what they've got. Um, Thanks, Gary. Phil, this, you said this is your first major tournament. I just wondered if any of the other players in the group who have played in a major tournament before have talked to you and others like you who haven't experienced this environment about how to make the most of it. Yeah, we've not long um, met up, so I'm sure that we we will have them conversations about old times and how we can do better. So, so yeah, let's see what happens. Do, do you take any of that on board? Do you? Do, I mean, how do you kind of switch off and remove yourself from that? Yeah, I don't think you um, can listen too much to what people are saying. Um, I have to try and keep my feet on the ground and just keep being me and keep doing what's. Um, done well for me this year what what do you actually do though do you i mean do you do you have a mechanism by which you kind of detach yourself from that do you, do you read that sort of stuff or do you just not take it in at all just try and come off social media as much as i can um i'm not trying to read it too much thanks